one I have out there is 65 acres, but it'll be in another lifetime before yeah, I can see it. came in right by the skin of my teeth. Huh? No, you're so it'll be next year. We're used to that some ways. Especially if you have to go all the way up to the next year. Okay, it's that time. Welcome to the uh, April 8, 2015 Planning Commission. <clears throat> Give you guys a chance to sit down. Okay, roll call, please. Dong. Here. Millings. Here. Elliot. Here. Yes. Here. Whitlatch. Here. Piliano. Here. And Commissioner Ag Aguilar is absent today. He did inform us he would be absent. Okay, thank you. Uh, now that you sat down, let's stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's cold in here. That's good, I don't fall asleep. Go to item two. At this time, members of the public may com comment on any items not appearing on the agenda. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon by the Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for Planning Commission consideration. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited at the discretion of the Chair. At this time, please use the microphone to state your name and address for the record if you want to make any comments. Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, item three, approval of the minutes. I move that we approve the minutes for March 25th, 2015 as presented. I second that. Uh, roll call, please. Gong? Yes. Phillies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. 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 Willach? Yes. Piliano? Okay, the March 25th me uh, minutes have been approved. Okay, we're going to go to item four. The, uh, this is a continued public hearing item, uh, 4A. This is the mining permit, number PMR 98003. Uh, this is a continued public hearing, will can pertain to the Clary County mining permit, PMR 98003 uh, CMEX, Stillwell. It's located north of uh, Lamadis Drive at, at Highway 198, uh, Lemon Cove, California. Continue from December 10, 2014 and February 25, 2015. And Mr. Spada is our speaker. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Spada, Resource Management Agency. Uh, the matter before you today is a continued public hearing involving the CMEX uh, mining permit and as indicated in the staff report, and as I will say here today, uh, since the uh, last uh, hearing before your commission, extensive discussions uh, have occurred uh, as between the representatives of the affected parties. And um, I requested that the attorneys for the respective parties uh, appear today and tell us the results of those discussions in the sense of whether uh, the parties have reached an agreement, i.e. settle the case, at which time I would like to return and then make a recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any comments up here? Okay, I'm gonna open the public uh, uh, public hearing, so uh, if, yes, come, on, come on up, your name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Chair and members of the Commission. My name is Patrick Mitchell. I'm an attorney from Mitchell Chadwick in Roseville, California, here on behalf of CEMEX today. Um, I'm just here to uh, report that we have entered a settlement agreement with the neighbors. It's, the contents of it are confidential, other than to disclose that it exists. Uh, my client already signed it last week, and uh, Mr. Carlson, the attorney for the neighbors, is here, and I'm sure he'll be able to inform you as well, but it's my understanding from him that his clients have agreed to sign it. He's just in the process of logistically getting all those various signatures. Um, we're also in agreement with Mr. Spot on some condition of approval revisions that we <coughs> talked about since your December hearing that were actually up on the um, screen at the December hearing, and we've those been revised slightly in some discussions. So I think we're, it's my understanding the county staff and the neighbors and the neighbor's attorney and CEMEX are all on the same page regarding both the settlement agreement and some revised conditions. 
So that's, that's my understanding. That's what I'm here to report. I can answer any questions other than the content of the agreement, if you have any. I had a question. I just wanted to um, <clears throat> briefly, if you could, review some of those conditions that were revised. We, sir, that would be a function of my presentation. Okay. Okay. And uh, so just hold that thought. All right. okay. Any other questions? My question. So, yeah, if we can't discuss it, there's no use. We don't have any questions. All right. Thank, all right. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Ray Carlson, 111 East 7th Street, Hanford, California. I'm the attorney for the affected homeowners. Uh, the parties have agreed on a settlement agreement and it's in the process of being executed. I would, uh, on the basis of that, support the request for the continuation of the hearing to the next meeting. If there's any further questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Uh, seeing no questions, thank you. Thank you. Any but any other people in the public wish to make any comments at this time? Okay, at this time I'm going to uh, close the public hearing and turn it back to staff. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, members of the commission. Um, on the basis of the representations that have been made by counsel for both parties in this case, I think there's a reasonable basis on which to conclude that the matter has settled. We don't have uh, a formalization of that point, but we do have, uh, I know, discussions, and now we have the uh, statements from the attorneys with regard to those discussions. As such, what I would suggest is that we continue it for 30 days so that I can prepare the resolution, which will then identify the revised conditions and also confirm that there has been a settlement between the parties and I will then circulate the draft resolution to the attorneys for the parties. You will have it in your packet so you know specifically. There are no surprises. The conditions that have been discussed through the several public hearings that are in your staff reports that you have are there. There have been some tinkering with regard to some uh, <clears throat> words of those conditions, but essentially you've heard them, you've seen them, you have them. So they're not gonna be any surprises. So what I would like to do then if it's uh, the indulgence of your commission, uh, re um, continue for 30 days, and then we will have a revised resolution which will hopefully finally resolve this matter. Thank you. So I guess it's uh, open for, if you guys don't have any questions, I guess it's open for some type well, of motion. I'll start with making a motion, then we could have discussion if necessary to uh, continue this for 30 days to a time certain, and that time is? May 13th. May 13th. I'll second. It's been moved and second. Uh, roll call, please. Long? Yes. Millie? Yes. Elliot? Yes. 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 Willach? Yes. Piliano? Yes. Okay. A done deal, guys. We'll <laughs> see you in 30 days. All right. The uh, motion has been passed. Thank you. <clears throat> For record today. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the, uh, I guess, the director report. I'll uh, briefly uh, update you that the um, board took action yesterday and approved the uh, zone change out on 198 and 216 for the restaurant out there. Uh, and then I will defer if, if the director wishes to, to update you on anything, and then I'll pass it on to uh, the chiefs. Oh, he's on, in conversation. We'll let him go. We'll go to the chiefs. <laughs> uh, Aaron Bach, chief planner, Tulare County RMA. Uh, basically, uh, we're still uh, plugging away on the community plans. Uh, we were in Tipton the other night. Uh, we're trying to progress these as quickly as possible. We have uh, drafts, uh, EIRs being worked on for... Fixley, Strathmore, and uh, Tipton concurrently, and we're hoping to get those out for the 45-day review over the next, this week and over the next couple weeks. So we're, we're hoping to be in front of you towards the end of May um, with uh, four, four community plans and uh, 
hopefully uh, a, another project as well. But uh, so what we'll just to give you a heads up, towards the end of May, you will have five uh, projects in front of you. Um, <clears throat> and, and besides that, again, we continue to process. Uh, we did uh, 23 permits this last month. Uh, so we're, we're, we're getting them out uh, <clears throat> and satisfying the, uh, our clients. So um, we're, we're progressing pretty. So I'll turn that over. I had a, a question for uh, Michael. Um, on that 216 and 198, the zone change, refresh my memory on that, that was to accommodate the, the propane tank? The propane the tank, RV, and boat storage oh, okay. in the restaurant to get that in compliance. Yeah. And it had the developer agreement that had uh, restricted uses, that had a limitation on what uses would be allowed on that site. We added uh, additional conditions. All the egress and ingress will be through th Avenue 334. It won't be extra uh, driveways along the highway. And uh, right turn only coming out of the, the thing onto 334, and uh, line of sight requirements at three, uh, 334 and, and the state highway. So, going to be some some sort of barrier to stop a left turn uh, at, coming off of. Well, yeah, there was going to be some 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 sort of a curbing right. to 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 direct the. Because otherwise, it won't. Right, and, and, and in reality, there's really no reason for people to be going left on 334 anyway. I, neighbors just had some concern that there may be some extra traffic going down that way. I don't believe that that it would actually happen. Would there's drop? no purpose of it, and there's nothing stopping people from going down there now. So uh, I don't I don't anticipate that there would be. But to accommodate their concerns, we uh, had the, the applicants going to install a right turn. Uh, only sign as well as some curbing with a radius to to direct the traffic to the right i misunderstood i was uh, thinking you had only a right turn onto 198 no no driveways on 198 right yeah it's, it's the 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 left hand uh, vehicles would be able to turn right or left at state as they do now at right. state highway uh 198 and avenue 334. Uh, excuse me i have a mechanical question um, if this agreement between these parties is um, <coughs> private, is it going to be somewhere written in the paperwork what the agreement is? How, that just totally? That will be, it'll be a non-disclosure. But um, they're, 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 the, the parties will have agreed. I, I, I'm, I would assume and, and be assured that the, the conditions that are going to be brought into the, the revised uh, amended conditions of approval, both parties have looked at those. I'm sorry. Agreed to those. Agreed to those terms, yeah. Oh, I think Hector. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's uh, hmm, go on to item. Six planning commission discussion for future items. I just wanted to make a comment on that last one too. That certainly is not <clears throat> any transparency, and I understand why the private parties can keep that, um, you know, in in non-disclosure. But you know, it seems like you know the public's followed this with great interest, and you know they heard what the homeowners wanted and they heard what the company wanted and then they don't hear what the outcome is well they'll see they'll they'll see that that there's a there that there's a so, settlement agreement so the home that you would you would presume the homeowners are satisfied as far as monetary damages or whatever that may have been yeah as well as there's going to be revised conditions of approval which will be public knowledge that yeah. will be there that that will all take place at the the may 13th meeting so media can be there see what the changes in the conditions of approval are and all of, all yeah. of that will all be public record so if in the settlement um, it's agreed to be um, watched more closely or tested, the wells tested, that would be in the conditions. Certainly, because this is going to be a public <clears throat> meeting as well still. So, so if, if the homeowner's attorney isn't satisfied with the way the conditions are written, he'll bring it up at, the, at that time. As well as, well, as Mr. Spada had said, it's full transparency. All parties are going to see these, these conditions. The planning commission will see it in their packet as well as both sides. So they're all going to be attuned to what the conditions are, the revisions are, and presume that everybody's agreeable or 
their displeasure will be <laughs> voiced at the podium at that meeting. <laughs> so the, um, then at that point, the permit will be, as long as those conditions are agreed upon, then the, the permit can go forward and be approved. Well, the, the permit is already a, a, a permit, so that we're revising. I believe we're just revising the conditions. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I understand. Different subject. Oh. Um, hmm? Go ahead. Uh, this last week, Governor Brown uh, put forth some uh, water restriction proposals uh, to reduce by 25 percent. Apparently, in urban areas and agriculture wasn't wasn't involved in that. Uh, what is the county's plan? And I know this is maybe a little beyond the commission, but what is the county's plan to enforce that in the unincorporated areas? And then how does that, uh, how's that going to work with uh, water, uh, providing water to um, these uh, small hamlet areas that, well, are, that are out of water? I, I, as far as two the, questions, yeah, I think. We're, we're at the very beginning of this. We're looking at the CSDs, they're independent districts, and, and we're looking at potentially train, get, providing some training. So we're, we're at the beginning stages of this, that those independent districts have to comply with that. And, and so they have their own systems. We control, what, two? Mr. Bond would probably. Yeah, uh, Mike Bond, RMA. Uh, there, there, we, the county has uh, four water systems, and one in Delft Colony, uh, one in Yetham, <coughs> uh, one in Seville, and uh, one in Wells Tract, uh, Wood, Wood Lake. Uh, and we implemented the conservation uh, measures uh, by notice uh, last year. So uh, those are in effect. The, uh, we will uh, do our best to reinforce those. There are some of the systems that are metered, some are not. So uh, having control is not uh, entirely in the county's ability to you know, monitor everything all the time. But uh, to the extent we can, we're um, communicating the notices and um, uh, you know, making observations. So we uh, try to be aware of any abuses that, in that regard. So um, that's, that's kind of the status. But it's just the four systems. So and by and large, they're uh, fairly, fairly well uh, you know, uh, behaved. So. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Uh, seeing nothing, I guess I will adjourn the meeting until uh, April 22nd. Thank you. Well, I paid extra today. <laughs> <laughs>